common mistakes that you may make when you're making your latte and cappuccino. So, the first one is milk. The standard size uh, measurement for latte and cappuccino is 130 ml for both. Yes, I know. There's a lot of you who believe that cappuccino has more milk. Yes, in a way. So, this is a cup. A latte has less frothiness, which is around there. And a cappuccino has more frothiness, which is around there. So, it has more frothiness, more air inside the cup. So, the amount of milk before you froth is the same, but the amount of milk, frothed milk, is different. And cappuccino has more frothiness. So imagine if you add in more milk before you froth, what's going to happen is, it is going to overflow. So don't add too much milk for your cappuccino before you froth, because it's cappuccino has more air in it, therefore you need to add in less milk. Next tip is, you need to flush your group head before you use it. As such. Okay. Now, the reason why you like to flush the group head is because how the coffee machine works is, it's a giant boiler, and there's pipes going into the group head, and when you press, what happens is the water from the boiler goes to the group head and comes out. The first few cups you make, or if you have not made coffee in a long time, let's say one hour, what happens is the water from the pipe is slowly drip out. So when you press, there is a shortage of water by 0 0.5 to 1 second. That comes out to roughly about 5 to 10 ml of water. Therefore, the first time when you make a cup of coffee, you probably get 20 ml instead of 30 ml, or 25 ml instead of 30 ml. So you get a shortage of water. And not to mention the temperature of water is slightly different. So the best is to flush the heat before you use it. If you don't do that, uh, you're going to have an inconsistency of uh, volume of espresso. Third popular mistake, make sure that the steam wand is hot when you're making and you're frothing the milk. Now the idea is if you do not heat up your frothing wand, okay, this is an insulated one. So if you don't um, heat up your frothing wand, what happens is that the first time you use it, the frothing wand is cold, so it takes longer to froth. The second time when you use the frothing wand is going to be hot. So the when you would like to froth the second cup, it's going to be shorter. So you have an inconsistency of time there. So remember, froth, uh, flush your frothing wand before you use to make sure that you have a consistent temperature and time. Next is to make sure that your steam wand is not clogged. How do you know is when you when you froth anything, you can see the steam coming out and depending on how many holes your nozzle for your steam wand, it should be that amount. For example, if this is a four hole, you should see four direction of steam uh, coming out from this wand. The steam wand hole tend to clog quite often if you don't clean it. So for example, let's say if your first cup you're making, you have four holes, steam comes out of four directions. After you make like five, six cups, you have not cleaned your wand and it only comes out one direction. What happens is that you're going to have inconsistency of steaming your milk and because of that, your coffee quality of your coffee is going to be uh, affected. So this is also one of the things that um, a lot of barista make a mistake by not checking. So make sure that check the um, how many you know, which direction the steam coming out from and make sure it tallies with your frothing uh, wand tip. The next tip is temper. Make sure that your temper is clean. You can see it's clean here. Um, you do not want to have like you know wet tempers on it. Uh, the reason why is because when you temp, uh, if it's wet, it's going to pull up a big chunk of ground coffee. So when it pulls out a big chunk of ground coffee, the amount of volume of coffee inside the porta filter is going to be different. For example, if it's flat, it's dry, it's going to have 7 grams. Maybe if it's wet, it may pull up 0.5, so you get like 6.5 grams of coffee. So the quality of the coffee and the taste will change because of that. The last tip is to actually flush your grinder before you grind your 
coffee. Now, this is, I know there are some people who know, uh, may not agree with this, but imagine if you have not made coffee in half a day. So inside your grinder, there is pre-ground coffee, slightly pre-ground. So you like to you know, grind like one shot, throw it away. If it's too long duration, you have not made coffee, like you know, half a day, you have not made any coffee at all. Or early in the morning, you want to make like one or two shots and throw it away because that coffee will probably be oxidized uh, by now and we have lost the flavor. Goodbye and please subscribe. I eat like coffee. Goodbye and please subscribe. Goodbye and please subscribe. Scan and record it.